All right, so today marks the end of our 40-day journey of letting go of every thought, emotion, and behavior that has prevented us from living our fullest life. We've spent 40 days doing this. And during those 40 days, we came to understand how holding on to anger and bitterness and blame and how complaining and criticism actually impacts us. We learned about non-resistance and detachment and what it means to fully surrender and let go and to surrender early to avoid the pain. And last but not least, we learned about fear and releasing thoughts of limitation, negative perspectives, self-pity, shame, and just the same old tired stories. Easter Sunday is one of my favorites because it is our chance for renewal. It literally is about renewal. It's about the resurrection of our lives. And I understand 2.4 billion Christians are celebrating around the world today. But many are celebrating Jesus rising above. But they're missing the point of this whole message, which is about us rising up and us overcoming trials and tribulations. The question I have for us is how many of us will change after today? How many of us will be back in the same place a year from now? Look back and see that we did the same thing all year. We didn't renew our thoughts. We didn't renew our thinking. We just continued to believe the old things that may not have let us live our best life. While the biblical message surrounds the death, the interpretation of this story is very empowering, and we can use it as a gift for ourselves. But we need to revisit the story to understand how the story actually matters today. Because I don't know about you, but growing up, I never understood why every year we had to go through the whole crucifixion again to actually get anything out of it. And I never really did get anything out of it, except the repeating of pain and suffering. But there's really more to the story, and it's actually really helpful. So let's just dial back and look at the story for a few minutes. So last week on Palm Sunday, I spoke about the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert, contemplating what he was going to do, praying, and finding some sense of balance in his life before he went into Jerusalem, knowing it probably wasn't going to be a very pretty experience. But he felt the need to go, and he did. So there's the celebratory meal that we all know now is the Last Supper. There's this meal. And he's with these 12 disciples, the people who followed him most. And he has this lovely meal. And the very next day, Pontius Pilate and this group of priests and elders decide to try him because they feel threatened because he is so powerful and too many people listen to him and that can't be good so Pontius Pilate felt kind of trapped and he had to do what these elders and priests said and he said and ordered Jesus's death so he's taken they put him on a cross he suffers he dies and oh by the way all the people who believed he was the only son of God, are looking at him. This is the story, how it goes, so stay with me. They're all looking, saying, well, if this guy is the son of God, how the heck did this happen, right? How could his own quote-unquote father do this to him? 
But we all know, we've talked about this day after day, week after week, there is no bad in God. God is not a human. God is an energy. God is all pure good. No one's making judgments on your life except you. If we're not empowered, it's us we have to look at. There's no magic in this. So now imagine all these people who are sad, they feel hopeless, they find out where he's been buried, and they go to see this tomb where his body's been placed. There's this big boulder in front of the tomb. The door's open, the body's gone, what the heck? So now they're making up all kinds of stuff. What happened to him? His body was stolen, this, that, and the other thing. But actually what happened was, in the story, he's resurrected to new, renewed life. And he only talks to the people in this spirit form that know him. Now remember, we weren't there. We don't know the whole story. But the point of the story matters. And that is that life is renewed by your own thinking. And that's what this story is about. Life renewal. So he tells everyone, I am the resurrection and the life. And that was a statement he had made in his Sermon on the Mount, so they knew this was the voice of him, and they felt really supported. Now, how many of us have faced tragedy and circumstance in our life that we thought was unbearable? Anybody here have a tragedy? Anybody here have pain, suffering in their life? Nobody but me? <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, uh uh-huh, that's what I thought. But we are proof of spiritual resurrection because after those horrific things we've been through, we're still here. We're still here to tell the story. We're still here to experience life no matter what we've been through. We are here to experience life the best life we can live, and we are the only person in the way of that happening. Your best life is right here, right here. These two things have to go together. We're proof of that. And spiritual resurrection is about emerging from our darkest days, trusting the road ahead, and eventually becoming clear about what is our next move with unshakable faith. Robert Flatt said, the resurrection gives my life meaning and direction and the opportunity to start over no matter what my circumstances. And that's what the Easter story is really about and that's what it brings to light for us. Hope was lost, hope was renewed, in a matter of three horrific days. Now, some of us have been through a lot more than three horrific days, right? But the idea is that after the dark comes the light. You ever notice after night comes the morning? After the dark comes the light. The sun will come up. We will rise back to that place of hope if we have unshakable faith. But your faith can't be only good during the good times. And every time something bad happens, you can't start, you know, losing hope. You have to ask yourself, what's next for me? If not this, then what? This or something better. That is what we all know is possibility. This or something better. You know, I often talk about how I think life is the train. It's a train. We're on our train. And our train goes along, and people get on, and people get off. And people get on, and people get off. And we get to different stations, and we experience different things. But our train keeps going. So the question is, 
as these things happen to us, how do we deal with them? Do we lose faith? Just because I'm worried doesn't mean I'm without hope. Just because I have a moment of fear doesn't mean I lose my faith. The biblical interpretation of spiritual resurrection or renewal refers to it as the cleansing of ourselves that allows us to transform our thinking. And Christianity didn't become powerful and get born because Jesus died. That story birthed the biggest religion in the world because there was life afterwards. There was the promise of hope. There was the promise of renewal after a crisis. If we use the story in our lives all year long, we would understand the metaphysical interpretation of crucifixion and resurrection, which I'm going to share with you. So crucifixion can be viewed as the spiritual practice of crossing out and releasing error in thinking of God as something outside of us. That's crucifixion from a metaphysical interpretation. Error in our belief that God is outside because this is all divine within. It's a matter of going within, praying, meditating, thinking, and seeing that we are all of the same spirit. That whole story of, oh, well, some people are luckier than me, that is absolutely not true. You are what you think. Your life represents your thoughts and your beliefs. I'm proof of that. It took a long time to learn that, but I am telling you, it is absolutely true. You want to know why your life sucks? Look at your thoughts. <laughs> Look in the mirror. Ask yourself, how do you see yourself? What do you believe about you? And when you don't believe anything good about you, guess what? Nobody else does either. And I'm not talking about ego good. I'm talking about seeing ourselves as capable of overcoming life's challenges. Let's talk about what resurrection means. Resurrection can be viewed as the spiritual practice of rising up and receiving the truth that empowers our best and the highest good and solidifies our inner connection to the highest spiritual energy in this universe. That's resurrection, rising up. Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore explained that the resurrection is the lifting of each of us into that Christ consciousness in several ways. First, lifting the faculties of our mind to conform with the most divine thoughts. Now, how many times in a week do you find yourself, eh, not so divine in thinking? <laughs> Second is renewing our thinking in ways that helps us transform our bodies to function in divine order. That's what Jeffrey's working on right now. Regardless of the out outer fix, how can he continue to see himself capable as he gets through this challenge? And third is changing our lives, our daily practices to live in truth and to align ourselves with spiritual law. And spiritual law is this. First, we have to consistently walk through life in faith, not just when it becomes easy or only when it becomes difficult, always. Faith has to be grounded to where our life circumstances never rattle us. You get that? So if you have really strong faith, no matter what happens, you're like, I got it. It's going to be okay no matter what. Isn't that what you said to me this morning? It's going to be okay no matter what. 
That's a great mentality. And third is, well, I'm sorry, that, the next thing I just want to point out is he says daily communion with God has to be affirming. Not, oh God, please let me out of this mess. It's, I affirm that the answers are coming and I'm open to receiving them. That's the message we have to have. I'm open and I'm open to receiving what is mine. Next, it's learning to live as spiritual beings where love is more important than fear and contentment and peace overcome the constant want and discontentment with life. Love. We need to understand that expressing gratitude must become more important than expressing lack. How many times are you noticing what you don't have? Even when you notice you're out of bread, it's lack. Right? There's got to be something else you can have. That's what it's about. Don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. Focus on the life that we have. And finally, we need to learn to be open to possibilities rather than be limited by our beliefs and our thoughts. There's a comforting passage in the Bible in Isaiah, and it says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. So with this passage in mind, I'm going to ask you to do a little exercise with me. If you're willing, close your eyes and take your right hand and put your right hand over your heart. And I want you to just say these two things with me. I am a spiritual being. Let's say that together. I am a spiritual being. And the second one is, I am open to receiving divine guidance. I am open to receiving divine guidance. Okay, let's do that again. Only this time you're not reciting it. You're taking it into your heart. I am a spiritual being. I am open to receiving divine guidance. All right, hold that thought, all right? Charles Fillmore said, every time we rise to the realization of eternal indwelling life, making union with the divine, the resurrection of Jesus takes place within us. All thoughts of limitation and inevitable attachment to material law, he said, are left in the tomb of materiality. But this experience of resurrecting our lives doesn't end with Easter Sunday. Believe it or not, in the next 50 days, which is called Eastertide, the concept is to celebrate the resurrection of recognizing everything around us that is being restored. Let's start with spring. Right? Have you noticed what's happening around you? Spring has sprung. We're seeing flowers we haven't seen in a while. We're seeing leaves that have died during the winter. And even here in Florida, we notice the change to spring. It's very evident. But this is what we need to do. We need to be mindful. Things are happening around us. We can't schedule our spiritual breakthrough. We can't schedule spiritual transformation because these are experiences that only happen to us when we are ready on the inside. Nothing gets transformed until your thinking is open to it. So Easter is a is perfect reminder that while life can be challenging, the painful parts of our stories are only a piece of our entire life experiences. The greatest gift is in how we rise to overcome what we faced. We can either choose to let Easter be nothing but that day we show up at church, 
and an opportunity for new beginnings. Or we could be open to changing ourselves from this day forward to where we have different thinking. And every time we hear an old message, we go, yeah, that's not me anymore. I don't need that theory. I don't need that thinking. And as we persevere in rela re releasing what binds us, and we allow ourselves to receive instead what blesses us, that divine spirit within us will continue to unfold. And peace and joy will become more familiar for us every single day. Let's review our takeaways. Spiritual resurrection can occur every day if we're willing to walk through life in faith and live as unstoppable spirits. Recognize the gifts of every challenge and reset, renew, and transform daily. And number three, acknowledge the I am power within us. Pray and meditate and listen for guidance. And number four, to practice letting go as more than just something we do the 40 days before Easter. Our affirmation today is I am spiritually renewed. I am spiritually renewed. And our quote is from Charles Fillmore. Christ within me is the resurrection and the life. Christ within me is the power that enables me to rise triumphant out of every trial. Let's take that in for a moment. And so we pause now to reflect upon the gift of being able to change our mind, change our heart, change our ways, the gift of being able to leave the past where it belongs behind us. To stop fretting over what was and start looking at what could be. To find that peace within us no matter what's happening. And to remember we are spiritual beings and guidance is always available. And so it is. Amen.